Hi and welcome to my lesson on the Doppler effect. So what is the Doppler effect? Well, I think the Doppler effect is probably better uh, demonstrated than explained. It goes like this. You notice that? That's the sound you hear when an approaching vehicle or something emitting a sound approaches you at a high velocity and the sound that you hear is at a higher frequency when it approaches you than when it passes you. When it passes you, it seems like the sound is at a lower frequency. It's a, uh, yes, it's a lower bass sound. Okay, so let's listen to that again. Okay, I wonder if you noticed it. Well, anyway, that's the Doppler effect. So the Doppler effect is when a sound that's emitted sounds higher pitch, or well not higher pitch, higher frequency when the object is approaching you or when you are approaching the object than when you are um, moving away from the object or the object is moving away from you. Okay, have you ever asked yourself why it is so? Well, let's look at the following example. Okay, so imagine we have a source of sound and here's my sound source. Now if after, if it is emitting a sound, let's draw the wave fronts um, as time goes by. So it's emitting a sound right now and after one wave front, it's, or after one second, that's the new wave front. Okay, so bear with me as I try to demonstrate this. Okay, so that is the first wave front. After one more second, this wave front is larger. So then it's at this position. Okay. So it's at that position. And remember that sound travels at 343 meters per second. So this wave front is about that distance from, from where it used to be. And this central wave front, this one, is now the, the second sound crest. Okay. And then after one more second, we have that our first one is now at this position. It's a little bit further. Okay. The second wave front is now this middle one. And the third wave front that was emitted one second ago is now there. And the fourth one is being emitted right now. So after four seconds, this is what we have. We have our first wave front is now the one that's furthest away from the source. Now so far please take note that this source is not moving. It's a stationary source. The second wave front is right on his heels. That's the second wave front. The third, there's the third wave front. Okay. The fourth one that was um, well sourced just a second ago is now at that position and the fifth wave front is just being emitted right now. Okay, so these are the crests of wave fronts. Now let's imagine that the source is moving now. So here is the source of our sound. Now at this very moment, it is emitting a sound. It is going to travel, let's say, to the east. And after one second, the sound wave that it's emitted right now will be here. But because the object is in motion, it will be here. And at this very moment, it will release its second sound wave. So one second later, our first sound wave will now be here. Our second sound wave be more or less around here. And our object is still in motion, so our object will be more or less here. Again, at this very moment, the next wave is being emitted. So that one second later, we have our first wave front a little bit bigger. The second wave front is also somewhat bigger. And the third one, which was emitted a second ago, will now be here. But my object is not here anymore. My object is still moving. My object should be more or less around here. And my fourth wave is emitted as we speak. Okay, so again, one second later, we have a larger first front, second front, and third front. And the fourth front that was emitted a second ago will now be here. And as before, my object is still moving. Do you notice what is happening? It seems like the sound waves or the wave fronts are actually squished together at the one end and further apart at the other end. 
Now, remember, the distance between the two wavefronts is the wavelength. So you can see here on this part of our diagram, the wavefronts are closer together, so the wavelengths are shorter. And here at the back, they're longer. That means that if we had a listener at this end, more wavefronts will hit his ear per second than a listener at this end. And that simply means that the frequency that this guy here, as the object is approaching him, is higher than the frequency that this guy here, as the object, is moving away from him. And that is why we have this effect. Because as it's approaching us, the wave fronts are squeezed together, or actually the sound waves are squeezed on top of each other. While when we're at the back of the source, the sound waves are almost like they're being pulled away from us. Okay, so I hope that makes a little bit of sense. Let's now look at the formula that's involved here.